Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sonia. Today I'm going to share with you how to paint a wooden bench. I already have a video similar to this up on the channel. I'll link it in the cards. But that video I use regular paint and today I'm going to use stain. Also that video is in Spanish so let me know if you'd like to see it in English and I'd be happy to translate it. So don't forget to like the video and to subscribe. I'm going to leave links to all the products and tools used in the description box. So check there and let's get started. So this is the front porch entrance of the house. We're going to work on the bench today. This is a bench that was already here. It was in the backyard along with all the junk that was there. We found it uh, with a bunch of stuff on top. So we brought it over here to the front of the house and now we're going to repaint it, restain it. The first step is to clean it very well. So I just doused the whole thing with my all-purpose cleaner, which is just water and soap. I wiped it down and then I let it dry a little bit before sanding. This is where it's very useful to have this electrical sander. The machine makes the job a lot easier. So we're going to start by removing the old paint first. This blue spot here in the front is where there was a big hole in it. So we put Bondo on it and we're going to let that dry before we sand off that piece of the wood. Now that the Bondo is dry, we're going to sand over it to make sure it is smooth along with the rest of that piece of wood. And then to get in between the slats, we're going to use a sandpaper just by hand to make sure we get into all those crevices. For the backrest, I'm switching to a 120 grit sandpaper instead of the 60 grit that I use for the seat. And that is because this backrest isn't in as bad condition as the seat was. So I don't need that really coarse grit of the 60. The 120 would do just fine here. And I'm going to go all over the wooden sections, the ones that look a little bit brown. Everything that's in black is metal, so I'm going to avoid those areas. But I am going to get as close as I can to the metal. This is where it helps to have this machine that has the pointy in. It's very convenient and it helps with that. So I'm going to remove as much of the old stain that I can. It's also helpful and easier uh, if you have two machines and two sets of hands. We didn't plan on having the two machines, but the one with the pointy end broke. And so we ended up just taping it. That orange tape that's around it keeps it together. But it works fine. Um, but we still needed and, and went out and bought the round one. So it helps to finish projects faster and easier when you have the two machines and two sets of hands. These pieces of wood that are in the center, they're curved and small, so it was going to be too difficult or more difficult than needed to sand and paint them as is. So we're going to remove them by taking out the screws that hold them in at the back, and then they just pop out. I'm going to take all of them out. I did go ahead and sand them just a little bit, not too much, uh, because we're going to spray paint them, and the spray paint usually holds on pretty easy. I chose this gold color. I think it'll match well with the black. So we spray painted one side and then it dried pretty quickly between 15 and 20 minutes. Flip them over and spray painted the other side. Me 
And the legs of the bench weren't looking too bad, but I did just want to give them one light coat just to freshen them up. This is black spray paint that we're using. And the piece of sandpaper that he's holding there is just to kind of protect the rest of the bench so it doesn't get stained with the spray paint. Usually would use like a piece of cardboard for this or something, but we couldn't find any. And we're going to paint the rest of the bench black anyway, so this was just a quick coat. We chose a stain that's in gel instead of oil because it's easier to work with. It doesn't require you to stir it as much and it dries quicker. This is the same stain that we use for the front door. I'm going to link that video of how we stain that front door up in the cars if you want to check it out. But it's the exact same stain so we use um, the same one for both and that way they would match. First um, he's applying this with a brush and then removing some of the excess with a shop cloth. And so he's going to switch back and forth between the brush and the cloth. The brush really helps to get into the nooks and crannies um, in between the slats to make sure all surface areas are covered. And then the shop cloth also helps it to like really sink in and to remove any of the excess. So you can be very liberal with this and apply as many coats as you'd like. On the C, we only needed one coat, but then I'll show you a little bit later on the backrest. We did end up needing a second coat just to make sure it was really, really opaque. I didn't really want to have any of the wood showing through, and so we needed a second coat on that. We let this first coat of stain dry for 30 minutes and still after the 30 minutes I didn't like how it looked. You could still see too much of the wood through and so we went ahead and added a second coat which was just enough to make sure it's opaque enough. I like it to be really pitch dark black and so it turned out better with the second coat. So won't you The final step is to apply the finish coat, the top coat or the sealer. We did this about 24 hours after the stain dried. And so what you want to do is use a brush, you dip it into the can and then you wipe it onto the surface very gently. So you don't want to put too much pressure on the brush here because you could bring up some of the stain with it. And you want to just do very smooth, even strokes so that it looks pretty and it dries pretty at the end. This is an important step because this bench is going to live outside. And so we want to make sure that the wood is protected from the rain, from, you know, weather so it can last a long time. This is the final step. After this, we just let it dry for about 24 hours and it's ready. We are also sealing the back of the bench because we did stain that as well. It's going to be up against the wall and so I didn't think it was absolutely necessary but just in case we ever want to move this bench somewhere else and the back is exposed, that one is also stained and sealed as well. Go 
Check out the before and after. I've said it many times before, but it's amazing how a little bit of paint can change the entire look. Don't forget to check the description box. I'm leaving links to the products and tools so that if you want to recreate this project, it's easy for you to find everything you need. Also, don't forget to like the video if you did like it and to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. My next video is going to be this entire front porch area already put together. Like I mentioned, we stained the door, we did this bench, but we also did a little bit of work on the flooring and put pots and plants and decorations. So um, stay tuned for that video coming up. Other than that, please leave me any questions or comments that you have. I would love to read those. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.